It's bad pop here. I got a pretty good beer. <laughs> But I got nothing but bad news for you ladies, so uh, you better buckle up because it's going to get tight up in here. I don't think I'm the only one who noticed that the word manipulation starts with man. And anyone out there who's been in a long-term relationship with a piece of slot C, that is no coincidence. And this is a request from several dudes out there for me to explain how the can't understand normal thinkers are pulling the strings and clean us out and take half our shit. And this episode is for those requests. With that being said, let us begin. Yeah. Manipulation. We're going to go into why it's done and how it's done. Women have come to understand that we men, we're simple animals, okay? You give them the carrot and you give them the stick. It's just that simple. And this is how they do it. First of all, carrot number one, praise. They do it a lot. They do it often. And then you become used to it. So when they stop doing it, you miss it. Thus, you will adjust your behavior to go back to getting it a lot. And this is just verbal praise. This has nothing to do with anything else. The bumping of the ugly factor, that's at the end of this presentation. Anyone who's ever been in a relationship for more than, I don't know, two seconds is familiar with the term guilt. Anyone who grew up in a single family home, especially with a mother in charge, this is the primary weapon to get you to do what they want you to do. They like to cry, make you feel bad. They question your manhood, especially in public. And they question your ability. You can't fix that. Such and such could fix it better, blah, blah, blah. They're guilting you. You're like, fuck that, I can fix that. And next thing you know, you've been ipulated. Simple touch. They control it. They can do it in public. They can get away with it when it's uninvited and just like praise. They do it a lot in the beginning and then they dial it back and then you start to miss it. When this is happening, you are getting ipulated like a Rubik's cube because they want all sides to match. Then you'll say, I do, and they can take you for half a shit. Next, we have compare. They're going to compare you to your friends and they're going to compare you to her friends and they're going to compare you to her ex-boyfriend or perhaps ex-husband. It's horrible. I mean, they do it all the time. So their friend gets a new car or they have a new family car. Guess who's going to get a new car if you can afford it or not? You are. Cut away. Cut away early. Cut away fast. I used to hate it when my ex-boyfriend did that. He flung you over the wall like a bag of flaming shit. <laughs> and you and I are going to have that conversation right now. Y'all know the avoidance thing, not coming home, the silent treatment, or threatening to flat out leave. So in today's day and age, since feminism has won, just let them go. They're not worth it anyway. F them. If she's staying away from home or doing a lot of overtime, she's already getting her tonsils buttered elsewhere. Usually this really isn't apparent until you get past like the third to fifth year of a relationship or you get married. And I call this the nag bomb. It just keeps going and going. If you do what they're nagging about, they'll just nag about something else. Because if they do it and they see positive feedback, they do it for everything. I know you think this is a positive thing if you get what you want all the time. But if you use this too much and too often, and with the wrong guy, probably catch yourself a bad case of cross-eyed beatdown. Just saying. Especially if you come home with herpagonocephalates. <laughs> Dudes, I'm not saying you should hit her, and I don't condone that. <laughs> but I understand. This might sound a little racist, but nobody likes naggers. Uh. Finally, we get to the last couple on this list, which are the most potent tools in a woman's arsenal. And first is seduction. It only lasts so long because guess what? Gonorrhea! No. <laughs> After about two and a half years, the honeymoon is over and it's just a dun, dun, it's just another thing. So they have to use this early. And when they do this, they're abusing a man's need for sex to control you. They're basically putting the ring in your nose and leaning around by your pecker. And that's really good up to about 34 because uh, that's when the big head overpowers the little head and you're like, oh, wait a minute. What's going on? Oh, shit. Oh. I'm going to sign over to you 20% uh, of my soul. What are you going to do with it? Whatever you want. You can't give it to the devil. Oh, fuck. Ha, ha. Last, we have sex. Yes, please. One, it's the greatest drug that's ever been created in the realm of nature. Dudes crave it all the time. Even women crave it, even though they say they don't. And if she's good at it, and she knows how to flip your switch and pull a dicky bank enough, you'll be less likely to kick her to the curb. Because guess what? It's a drug and you're addicted. Seduction? led to you taking the drug and then she gives it to you real good and then you get addicted to it and just dangle it over you just to control you just enough to get whatever she wants and you'll come back for more because you're an idiot of all the things on this list there's really only one you can use as a double agent against them and that is sex all right let's take it from me dudes there are very few things on the face of this earth that'll put a smile on a woman's face better than a multiple orgasm. So if you read your books, buy the magazines, find out what flips their switches, and if you get the perfect combination, you can ride them into the poorhouse. Winning! And I want to have sex! Ooh. 
There are eight things here women use to ipulate you. And once they use these, there's seven more things that you're probably gonna have to deal with a lot. You've been praised, touched, nagged, guilt bombed into oblivion, and why do they do that? Number one on the list, they want free shit. And anytime they want something, they just pull in their dicky bank and you'll produce it for them. You realize after you're outside the box looking in, that you are just a placeholder until they can swap you out for something better. They will use their tears and guilt to extort you. They cry and cry to change your behavior. And I don't buy the fact that only 3% of women actually hit their significant others. It's a bunch of bullshit. You know, if you get off your cat videos and pay attention to the world, in cases where the domestic violence is not reciprocal, women do it more. Usually, their targets are children, but hey, that's another topic. I'm triggered. And the minute they hit you and you throw them out or whatever you're gonna do, they cry, they whine, they do the guilt, they do whatever they can to manipulate their ways back into your life. And dudes fall for this over and over and over again. Next, we have humiliating you in public. And they do this to make it known that they're taking the power in their relationship. And when that happens in public, it's a double-edged sword because if you say something about it, all the white knights will be like, hey man, you just need to calm down. And then if you just sit there and take it, you're a simp mangina. And the only way for your dudes to win in this situation is to put the battle on hold, go home, and kick her ass to the goddamn curb. One of the main reasons why all these women pressure you into marriage, pressure you, pressure you, pressure you, so they can sex starve your ass and then have a stick over your head to punish you if you go elsewhere. And if you're a dude, you know this is going on because you're used to getting it twice a week. And then you marry him and it goes to once a month and you're like, hey man, is something, something up or am I doing something wrong or what's going on here? And she's gonna come up with a million reasons that you know in the back of your head have nothing to do with the game plan in front of you because they will insist that you're the problem, thus trying to guilt you even more. But once you've had the same conversation rationally try to fix the problem, and they don't want to fix it, I'm gonna get something on the side because I can't put up with this. Guess what? You just lost your retirement, you lost access to your children, and uh, you're homeless and you're paying her alimony and child support. The punishment goes to the sex starvation. Don't fall for that shit. And you know what? Tell her to f off and say wah. And the final step, and then cementing the fact that they now have all the power in the relationship is they take away your routine. And they do this, especially if that routine involves people that are your friends or family, or even a female friend, because guess what? They want all that power for themselves. That's a toxic relationship, and she's only doing it because she wants a horse to pull the cart. She wants to blind you so you only see what's in front of you, and she dangles the carrot, and you will go forward at I don't give a f speed to please her. Guess what you just became? A Wade slave. <laughs> Oh my God, how do these men get hooked into these toxic relationships with crazy women like that? Well, I'm gonna tell you the steps that they use to set this whole goddamn game up because if you see the steps coming, you'll know how to defeat the trap. And basically they use the same seven steps to rinse and repeat to shake your ass down. They will be whatever you desire. If you want the chick with big tits, they'll go to great lengths to have big tits. And they will like the hockey games, and they will like the football games, and they will say all this shit just to be what you want. If it is too good to be true, it is. She will put on a facade like she's in high demand. She's actually marketing herself to you. She does it through stories or innuendos or what have you. Keep your eyes open. When that happens, then guess what happens after that? The chase begins to give you some form of satisfaction that you've subdued her and now she's yours. And we all know how that ends, huh? Isn't that right, Admiral Akbar? It's a trap. She compliments the hell out of you like, no one's ever done this before. Nobody ever did it like that. You're the best I ever had. She's pulling the strings so she can bring the trap down and trap your ass in the soul sucking equation, which is the modern relationship. Next, once she's established the fact that she is everything you wanted and the trace is going on and the compliments are coming out like maple syrup. Oh, wait a minute. But you're great and everything, but I don't know. I really don't need you. I'm, I'm independent because what she's doing now is she's turning up the chase meter from eight to 10. And the last step on this is they hyperplay their feminine side and they do this to flip that switch in every male's brain and you will ride to the rescue. You will protect them, shield them, keep them safe because it's hardwired into every dude's mind and it's hard to overcome. And one of the main reasons why I do this show is so you will realize that you don't have to ride to the rescue anymore. Because if you do, they're gonna drag you behind the cart until you're half dead and half your shit's gone. I'm triggered. All of this here has been programmed 
into the women of today. And they do all of this so they can get more shit. And they believe, thanks to third wave feminism, that they're entitled to maximum reward for minimal effort. I find it highly ironic that a, a population of women out there who say gender is a social construct use that same gender to get whatever the f they want. Edit that out. Don't you ever write a check against a woman of today. Don't do it. Keep them around. Bang them if you want. Be my girlfriend, boyfriend. Don't get married. Marriage for dudes doesn't really have any benefits whatsoever. You know that we don't have a slot C, but we have one of these, and this is our slot C. And if you get married, get prepared to have this rate. Her, the judge, friend of the court, and whoever else they invite into the equation is gonna ram it up your ass, and when they're done, they're gonna beat you to death with it too. So gentlemen, take my advice. Don't get married. And while you're at it, check out our Patreon and PayPal links and send us some of that money that you're saving so we can keep doing this because it's expensive. And while we're at it, please hit the subscribe button. Because if you do, I guarantee you, I'll jump on the guilt bomb for you and take the blast. <laughs>You know, they compare you. Like, well, yeah. your buddy John does that for his wife. My ex-boyfriend used to do that. Yeah, yeah, oh, my ex-boyfriend. This was no problem for him. You're like, oh, I can beat that guy. I'll do it. Like, shut up. Over the wall you go. <laughs> your friend doesn't burp like that. <laughs> Have you seen what his wife looks like? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> hey, you're sporting a six. He's sporting a nine. He has to do that shit to impress her. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's a dick move, but it's true. <laughs>